God wants to see you succeed. Written and published by God Daily News. Introduction. Have you ever pondered the biblical assurance that God yearns for your success? Just as a potter shapes clay, you can mold your life into a success story by embracing God's will, as referenced in scriptures such as Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Holding on to faith, trusting His timing, and remaining obedient to His commands, you are poised to stride towards prosperity. Moving through life's challenges, you'd find strength in God, shaping your journey to a victorious conclusion. Why not begin on this spiritual exploration to reveal the divine blueprint for your success? Chapter 1. God's Promise of Success In your journey of faith, you'll discover that God's promise of success isn't a vague or empty pledge, but a divine guarantee rooted deeply in the scriptures. This promise, you'll find, isn't about temporary or worldly success, but rather about spiritual prosperity and eternal life. You see, when you explore the Bible's teachings, you'll observe that God's promise of success is tied to obedience and faithfulness. Look, for instance, at Joshua 1 verse 8, which says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. This passage clearly suggests that success in God's eyes is linked to a life lived in accordance with His laws. But it's not just about obedience. It's also about having faith in God's promises. Hebrews 11 verse 1 describes faith as, confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we don't see. This means that even when things don't seem to be going your way, you're called to trust in God's plan, knowing that His promise of success is sure. This, then, is the essence of God's promise of success, it's a divine assurance of spiritual prosperity and eternal life, conditional upon your obedience and faithfulness to His laws, and your unwavering faith in His promises. It's not a blind guarantee but a conditional promise, designed to lead you not to worldly success, but to spiritual prosperity and eternal life. Chapter 2. Faith and Action. To fully realize God's promise of success, it is essential to comprehend that action must go hand in hand with faith. The Bible, in James 2 verse 17, eloquently states that, faith by itself, if it doesn't have works, is dead. This verse implies that faith isn't a passive state of mind but a dynamic force that propels you into action. In the same way that plants need water and sunlight to grow, your faith requires actions to thrive. When you act, you're expressing your trust in God's promise and displaying your conviction. It's almost like saying, I believe in God's promise so much that I'm willing to work towards it. Consider the story of Noah in Genesis 6 verses 9 to 22. Noah didn't just have faith in God's warning about the impending flood, he acted on it. He spent years constructing the ark, a challenging task that required immense effort, patience, and perseverance. His faith, combined with his action, led to his salvation and the continuation of life on earth. But remember, this isn't about partnering in your strength. It's about collaborating with God, leaning into his strength, and acting on the faith he's given you. As Philippians 2 verse 13 declares, For it's God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. Chapter 3. Trusting in God's Plan. While acting on your faith is essential, you also need to trust wholeheartedly in God's plan for your life, even when it seems challenging or unclear. Trusting in God's plan means surrendering your own understanding and desires to His will. It's about believing that His plan for you is perfect, even if it doesn't align with your own expectations. God's plan isn't always easy to understand and it can often seem counterintuitive. But the Bible reassures us of its perfection in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This scripture is a demonstration of God's unwavering dedication to your success. You might face trials and tribulations, but they're part of a bigger picture that you can't see yet. As Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 advises, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, 
and he'll make your path straight. Chapter 4 Seeking Divine Guidance Having put your trust in God's plan, you're now ready to seek His divine guidance in every step of your journey. The quest for divine guidance isn't a passive pursuit, it's active, resolute, and intentional. Turn your attention to James 1 verses 5 to 6, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. This scripture assures us that God is willing to guide those who seek his wisdom genuinely and with unwavering faith. Seeking divine guidance also requires a humble heart. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 teaches us to trust in the Lord with all your heart, and don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll make straight your paths. Your own understanding, while valuable, is limited. Acknowledge God's infinite wisdom above your own. Lastly, be patient. Divine guidance doesn't always come in our timing but in God's perfect timing. Recall Habakkuk 2 verse 3, For the revelation awaits an appointed time, it speaks of the end and won't prove false. Though it linger, wait for it, it will certainly come and won't delay. Chapter 5 The Power of Prayer In your journey towards success, prayer serves as a powerful tool, connecting you directly with the divine wisdom and guidance of God. It's through prayer that you tap into the supernatural resources that fuel your ambitions and foster your growth. Prayer is basically your spiritual communication line with God, allowing you to present your desires, express your gratitude, and seek His wisdom. Scripture emphasizes the power of prayer. James 5:16b states, The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. It suggests that your prayers have the potential to create significant changes in your life and circumstances. Additionally, in Philippians 4 verses 6-7, Paul encourages, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. The power of prayer isn't about manipulating God to do your bidding, rather, it's about aligning your will with His. It's about seeking His guidance and expressing your complete dependence on Him. As you pray, you're not just speaking to the air, you're communicating with a living, loving God who desires your success even more than you do. When you pray, let your words be sincere and your heart be open. Trust that God hears you and that He's working for your good, even when it doesn't seem so. Remember, prayer is more than just asking, it's also about listening. As you pray, Aim to listen to God's voice, seeking His guidance and wisdom in every step of your journey. Chapter 6 Overcoming Challenges Every journey to success is paved with challenges, but remember, these trials aren't roadblocks but stepping stones designed by God to strengthen your character and prepare you for the greatness He's planned for you. You're not alone in your struggles, God is at your side, guiding you through every difficulty. Take heart in the words of James 1 verses 2 to 4, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. These verses remind us that trials aren't meant to break us, but to build us, to make us stronger and more resilient. It's important to understand that challenges aren't punishments, they're opportunities for growth. With each hurdle, you're being shaped into the person God wants you to be. Lean on His wisdom, and you will discover that even in the most difficult situations, there is a lesson to be learned and a silver lining to be found. God's promise in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, assures us that He wants us to succeed. Trust in God's plan, rely on His strength, and keep your faith alive even in the face of adversity. With God on your side, you can overcome any challenge that comes your way. Chapter 7 Gratitude and Blessings In the midst of life's trials and tribulations, it's important to cultivate an attitude of gratitude, recognizing the blessings God has bestowed upon you. 
Your perspective on life can shift dramatically when you take a moment to thank God for the gifts you've received, however small they may seem. The Bible reminds us in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Gratitude is more than a simple thank you. It's a mindset, a decision to focus on the good in your life. It's acknowledging God's presence and His work in your life. It's understanding that blessings aren't always material or tangible, they're the love, peace, and joy that God provides. Through gratitude, you're able to see God's blessings more clearly, reinforcing your faith and building a stronger relationship with Him. Remember, gratitude doesn't mean ignoring your struggles or pretending everything is perfect. It's about finding God's grace and blessings in the midst of challenges. It's about trusting that God has a plan for your life, as Jeremiah 29 verse 11 assures us, For I know the plans I for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Let gratitude become your daily practice. Pray with thanksgiving, acknowledging God's goodness. Use gratitude as a lens to see God's blessings in your life. You'll find that the more grateful you are, the more you'll recognize God's hand in your life, guiding you towards success. Chapter 8 Living in Abundance As you journey through life with a heart full of gratitude, God's promise of abundance becomes more evident in your life. This abundance isn't merely about material wealth, but encompasses peace, love, wisdom, and spiritual fulfillment. God's intention is for you to thrive, not just survive. Consider the biblical passage John 10 verse 10, where Jesus states, I have come that they may have life, and have it to the full. This verse encapsulates God's desire for you to live in abundance. It's a call for you to recognize and receive the overflowing blessings that God pours into your life daily. Let's not confuse abundance with excess. Living in abundance isn't about hoarding or having more than others, it's about acknowledging God's continuous provision. It's about allowing God's blessings to overflow from your life into the lives of others. Remember the story of the widow's oil in 2 Kings 4 verses 1 to 7. In a time of need, the widow experienced God's supernatural provision. The oil, a symbol of God's abundance, didn't run out until all the jars were filled. This story illustrates that God's abundance is unlimited and meant to be shared. Chapter 9 Embracing God's Love While experiencing the fullness of God's abundance paves the way for a vibrant life, it's also pivotal to embrace the profound depth of His love that surrounds and sustains you. Understanding God's love isn't just about knowing it intellectually. It's about experiencing it in a personal, intimate way. It's easy to say, God loves me, but truly embracing His love means letting it infiltrate every aspect of your life. The Bible, in 1 John 4 verses 9 to 10, illustrates this beautifully, in this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent His only Son into the world, so that we might live through Him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the sacrifice for our sins. This passage emphasizes that God's love is active, sacrificial, and selfless. It's a love that doesn't wait for us to earn it or deserve it. To embrace God's love, you need to accept it without reservation. You don't need to prove yourself worthy of His love, you already are. God's love is unconditional, and it's always available to you. Remember, Romans 8 verses 38 to 39 assures us that nothing can separate us from God's love. Embracing God's love isn't a one-time event. It's a continuous journey of recognizing His love in every circumstance, sharing that love with others, and letting it guide you towards a successful life that honors Him. After all, in the journey of success, understanding and embracing God's love is your firm foundation. Chapter 10 Finding Strength in Weakness Through the lens of your human frailty, God's strength reveals itself, turning perceived weaknesses into powerful platforms for His glory. You may feel inadequate, overwhelmed, or insufficient. Yet, it's precisely in these moments that God's power becomes most evident, 
transforming your seeming inabilities into opportunities for divine intervention. Refer to 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 to 10, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. That is why I will joyfully brag about my weaknesses, so that Christ's might can rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I enjoy weaknesses, insults, sufferings, persecution, and problems. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. This scripture illustrates how God's power is most potent when we acknowledge our weaknesses and surrender them to Him. One of the profound truths in your spiritual journey is recognizing that your strength doesn't come from your own abilities, but from God. You're not expected to navigate life's challenges independently. Instead, you're invited to lean on God's strength, to surrender your weaknesses, and to allow His power to work through you. In the face of trials, don't fixate on your human limitations, but focus on God's limitless strength. You're not lessened by admitting your weaknesses, instead, you're made stronger. By acknowledging your frailty and relying on God's power, you align yourself with His divine plan, allowing Him to transform your weaknesses into strengths for His glory. Chapter 11 Walking by Faith Now, picture your journey of faith as a walk, one where you step forward into the unknown, trusting in God's guidance even when you can't see the path ahead. Walking by faith, not by sight, is a fundamental part of your spiritual journey. In essence, it's about putting your complete trust in God, leaning not on your own understanding but on His wisdom and love. Remember the story of Peter in Matthew 14 verses 22-33. Amid a stormy sea, Peter, in faith, steps out of the boat to walk towards Jesus. That's what faith looks like, stepping into the unknown because you trust in the one who calls you. You're not going to know all the answers, and that's okay. God doesn't require you to have everything figured out. He simply asks that you trust Him. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 tells us, For we live by faith, not by sight. This scripture reminds us to put our confidence in God's promises, not in our circumstances. You see, faith isn't about what you see, it's about what you believe. It's about trusting that God's plans for your good, even when you can't see the end of the journey. Chapter 12 God's Timing is Perfect Ever wondered why certain events in your life don't happen when you want them to, but when they eventually do, it's the perfect time. This isn't merely a confirmation, but rather a reflection of God's impeccable timing. God's timing isn't our own, yet it's always perfect. You may feel like you're in a season of waiting, praying for a breakthrough that seems elusive. But remember what's written in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, To everything there's a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. God isn't neglecting you, He's preparing you. He's refining your character, building your resilience, and deepening your faith. It's natural to grow impatient or even doubtful when things don't proceed as planned. You may start to question God's intentions or His existence. But hold on to your faith. Remember Habakkuk 2 verse 3, For the vision is still for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, and not lie, if it tarries, wait for it, for it will surely come, it will not tarry. God's promises will be fulfilled in His perfect time. In these waiting seasons, instead of questioning God's timing, seek to understand His purpose. His timing isn't meant to harm you but to prosper you, as stated in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. So, don't rush, but wait with hope and patience. God's timing is perfect, and when the moment arrives, you'll realize that the wait was worth every second. Chapter 13 Wisdom from Proverbs Delving into the book of Proverbs, you'll find a treasure trove of wisdom that God has generously shared for your success. This book, inspired by God, is filled with practical counsel that you can apply in your everyday life. It's a roadmap to success, not just in a worldly sense, but more importantly, in a spiritual sense. One key piece of wisdom that stands out is in Proverbs 16 verse 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He'll establish your plans. 
This verse is a wonderful encouragement, reminding you that God is interested in your success. He's not a distant deity, but a loving Father who wants to be involved in your plans. It's a call to trust Him, to lean not on your own understanding, but to acknowledge Him in all your ways. Another significant verse is Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. Here, God is telling you to trust Him completely. He's got a plan for you, and it's a good one. But He needs you to trust Him, to let go of your own ideas and notions, and to let Him guide you. These verses, along with the many other pearls of wisdom in Proverbs, are God's way of guiding you towards success. They're reminders that He's with you, that He cares for you, and that He wants you to succeed. Chapter 14 Perseverance and Endurance How often have you stumbled, faced failure, and felt like giving up on your path to success? It's a feeling we all grapple with from time to time. Yet, the Bible encourages you not to surrender but to persevere, no matter the difficulties you encounter. Perseverance is a key theme in Scripture, suggesting that enduring hardship isn't just an unfortunate part of life, but a crucial element of spiritual growth. James 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. This verse assures you that your trials aren't in vain. They're refining you and preparing you for a future reward. Similarly, Romans 5 verses 3 to 4 states, We also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. Essentially, your trials aren't merely obstacles, they're opportunities for growth. They cultivate endurance, and this endurance molds your character, and character gives birth to hope. Chapter 15 Divine Favor and Blessings In the grand tapestry of your life, God's divine favor and blessings aren't simply extras, they're an integral part of His plan for your success. These aren't haphazard gifts, but are intricately woven into the fabric of your existence, intended to propel you towards your divine purpose. The Bible is replete with instances where divine favor and blessings played a transforming role in people's lives. Consider Joseph, who despite numerous adversities, experienced God's favor, resulting in his rise to power in Egypt, Genesis 39 verse 21. Or Esther, who found favor in the king's sight, leading to the deliverance of her people, Esther 2 verse 17. These aren't mere historical accounts, they're testimonies of God's unchanging nature. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, Hebrews 13 verse 8, and His favor is available to you. Psalms 84 verse 11 assures that God will withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly. However, divine favor isn't a magic wand. It doesn't eliminate challenges but equips you to overcome them. It's not a license for complacency, but a call to active faith. The Apostle Paul's life exemplifies this, as he faced numerous trials yet thrived through God's grace, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. Chapter 16. Honoring God with your work. While divine favor empowers you, it is your responsibility to glorify God by excelling at your job and utilizing your strengths and talents to their greatest extent. When you put your heart and soul into your work, you're not merely serving your employer or your customers, but serving God Himself. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, Colossians 3 verse 23. Success isn't simply about gaining wealth or status, it's about becoming the very best you can be in your chosen field, and using that success to glorify God. Take your work seriously, for it's an integral part of your spiritual journey. Do you see someone skilled in their work? They'll serve before kings, they'll not serve before obscure men, Proverbs 22 verse 29. You're a steward of the talents God has given you. If you bury them in the ground, you're dishonoring God but if you multiply them, you're honoring him. Remember the parable of the talents, Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30. It's not enough to just have talents, 
You need to use them wisely and productively. Chapter 17 Humility and Success True success, it's important to understand, is often intertwined with humility, a virtue that keeps you grounded even as you soar to great heights. You see, humility isn't about thinking less of yourself but thinking of yourself less. It's about recognizing that every stride you make is by the grace of God, not your own strength alone. The Bible underscores the significance of humility in many passages. Proverbs 22 verse 4, for instance, states, The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. This scripture illuminates the divine truth that success and humility aren't mutually exclusive. Rather, they're divinely interconnected. In your journey to success, it's vital to remember that humility is the ladder to divine elevation. Jesus Christ, in his profound wisdom, teaches us in Matthew 23 verse 12, Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. This verse is a gentle reminder that God exalts the humble and humbles the exalted. Moreover, humility opens the door for God's grace, an essential ingredient for success. As James 4 verse 6 states, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. This grace fuels your ambition, sustains your efforts, and ultimately leads you to the success God desires for you. Chapter 18 Turning to God in Times of Need As you navigate life's challenges, turning to God in times of need becomes not just an option, but an essential step towards achieving the success He's planned for you. God doesn't want you to struggle alone, He wants to help, guide, and fortify you. You're not expected to be self-sufficient, you're meant to lean on Him. In the Bible, many individuals turned to God in their trials. King David, for instance, faced numerous adversities, yet he continually sought God's guidance, as evidenced in the Psalms. He reminds us in Psalm 50 verse 15, Call upon me in the day of trouble, I'll deliver you, and you'll glorify me. It's a powerful statement, urging us to seek God in our difficulties. When you're weighed down by worries, don't hesitate to cast them upon God. 1 Peter 5 verse 7 encourages you to, cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. You're never a burden to God, He yearns for your trust and reliance. Turning to God in times of need isn't a sign of weakness, rather, it's an acknowledgement of His omnipotence and your dependence on His divine strength. It's about understanding that success isn't solely about your efforts, but also about God's providence and guidance. As you walk this journey, remember Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. This is your divine assurance, God is your ally in success, turning to Him is your strength. Chapter 19 God's Provision and Your Provision in your journey towards success, don't overlook God's provision, for it's through His abundance that your needs are met and your path illuminated. It's not merely about physical sustenance or material wealth, but also wisdom, guidance, peace, and strength. God doesn't lack in any resource, and He's more than willing to provide for you, Philippians 4 verse 19. God's provision doesn't necessarily mean an absence of adversity. The Bible is replete with stories of faithful men and women who faced trials, yet were sustained by God. Consider Joseph, who despite being sold into slavery and subsequently imprisoned, rose to a place of prominence because God was with him, Genesis 39 verse 2. Also, think of the Israelites in the wilderness who were given manna from heaven and water from a rock, Exodus 16 verse 4, 17 colon 6. Chapter 20 Aligning your goals with God's will. While embracing God's provision is important, understanding how to align your goals with His will is equally significant in your journey towards success. You see, God's will isn't a hidden, abstract idea. It's a tangible, accessible plan He's laid out for you. God's will encompasses His desires for your life, and when you align your goals with His, you're setting yourself up for divine favor and blessings. In Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, you're urged to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, 
in all your ways submit to him, and he'll make your path straight. This scripture encourages you to fully trust in God's wisdom, rather than relying solely on your own. In doing so, you're aligning your aspirations with God's will, which is key to your success. To align your goals with God's will, start by praying for discernment. Ask God to reveal His will for your life and to give you wisdom to understand it. It's important to spend time reading and meditating on God's Word, as it's the primary way He communicates His will. As you gain clarity on God's will, you can then align your goals accordingly. This might mean adjusting your current goals or setting new ones that better align with God's desires for you. Remember, success in God's eyes may look different from worldly success, but it's ultimately more fulfilling and lasting. In closing, aligning your goals with God's will is an essential step towards the success that God wants for you. Embrace this divine alignment, and watch how God begins to prosper you. Chapter 21 Promises of Prosperity Countless promises of prosperity are woven into the scriptures, each one revealing God's inherent desire for you to thrive and succeed. The Bible is filled with assurances of God's provision and blessing, underscoring the divine intention for your life's prosperity. Take, for instance, the book of Jeremiah, 29:11, where God states, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This declares God's will for your well-being and success. Similarly, in Philippians 4 verse 19, it's written, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. This scripture assures God's provision, reinforcing the promise of prosperity. However, it's important to understand that biblical prosperity isn't limited to material wealth. It extends to spiritual abundance, peace, and contentment. In 3 John 1 verse 2, the Apostle John prays, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. This suggests a holistic view of prosperity encompassing physical health, spiritual growth, and success in endeavors. In the light of these promises, it's evident that God desires your prosperity. He's committed to your success and provides promises as anchors for your faith. Embrace these promises, align your actions with God's will, and you'll witness manifestations of divine prosperity in your life. Remember, prosperity in God's terms is all-encompassing, involving not just financial success but also spiritual growth, peace, and overall well-being. Chapter 22 Embracing Your Identity in Christ To fully experience this divine prosperity, you must first embrace your identity in Christ. This isn't merely a religious axiom, but a fundamental truth that shapes your attitude towards life and success. Remember, you're not just a physical being having a spiritual experience, but a spiritual being having a human experience. Understanding your identity in Christ is acknowledging that you're a new creation, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. It implies realizing that your value and worth aren't based on worldly standards, but on the sacrificial love of Christ. You're God's masterpiece, created anew in Christ Jesus, to do the good things He planned for you long ago. Ephesians 2 verse 10. Embrace this truth, internalize it, let it shape your beliefs and actions. Next, you need to realize that you're God's child, John 1 verse 12. This isn't just a nominal title, it's a reality that comes with privileges and responsibilities. As his child, you've been given the authority to become heirs of God's promises, Romans 8 verse 17. You're not a slave to fear, but a beloved child who can boldly approach God's throne of grace, Hebrews 4 verse 16. Chapter 23 Stepping Out in Faith How, then, do you step out in faith, fully trusting in God's promises and plans for your life? It begins by understanding that faith isn't just about believing in God, but also believing in His ability to work in and through you. Recall the story of Peter walking on water in Matthew 14 verses 29 to 31. Peter didn't just believe in Jesus, he believed in Jesus' ability to make him do what seemed impossible. 
You're called to do the same, stepping out of your comfort zone into the unfamiliar where God's power is made perfect. Stepping out in faith also involves surrendering control. You've to let go of your plans, your timelines, your expectations, and allow God to lead. This isn't easy, but Scripture reassures us in Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. Lastly, remember that faith isn't static, it grows as you exercise it. Like a muscle, the more you use it, the stronger it becomes. As Hebrews 11 verse 1 tells us, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we don't see. Every time you step out in faith, you're giving God an opportunity to show His faithfulness, increasing your confidence in Him. Chapter 24 The Fruit of the Spirit Exercising your faith, just as you've stepped out onto the waters of the unknown, prepares your heart to bear the fruit of the Spirit, a divine manifestation of God's nature in your life. As shared in Galatians 5 verses 22-23, these fruits include love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the virtues that God wishes to cultivate within you as you grow in your relationship with Him. Each fruit doesn't just appear, it's grown. And like any good fruit, it requires time, care, and nurturing. But remember, you're not alone in this journey. God's Spirit is your ever-present gardener, working tirelessly to foster these qualities in your life. He prunes, waters, and nurtures your spiritual growth, guaranteeing that you not only survive, but thrive. And why does God do this? Because He wants you to succeed. He wants you to experience the fullness of His divine nature, to mirror His image in the world. It's not about worldly success, but about spiritual growth, about becoming more like Him. Moreover, bearing the fruit of the Spirit isn't just for your benefit. These fruits are meant to be shared. As you demonstrate love, patience, kindness, and the other fruits in your life, you're impacting those around you. You're being a light in the world, reflecting God's love and grace. Chapter 25 Victory in Christ As you journey on this path to success, remember that victory is already ours in Christ. Embrace God's promises, for they're the foundation of our triumph. Through unwavering faith, we can overcome any trials and live a victorious life, a proof of His glory. In your journey towards spiritual success, embracing God's promises is an essential step that paves the way for your victory in Christ. God's Word is filled with assurances that are meant to fortify your faith and embolden your spirit. These divine promises, such as those found in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, assure you of a hopeful future. They're not just words, they're God's commitment to you. Remember, God isn't a man that he should lie, Numbers 23 19. Every promise he makes, he intends to fulfill. Hold on to them, meditate on them, and let them be your guide and comfort. Remember, God's promises are your spiritual inheritance. Embrace them wholeheartedly as they're pivotal in your journey towards spiritual triumph. Your journey's next pivotal step lies in overcoming life's challenges through unwavering faith in Christ, which brings about true victory. This isn't about ignoring hardships or pretending they don't exist. It's about recognizing them, then boldly declaring your faith in God's ability to deliver you. As expressed in 1 John 5 verse 4, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Hence, faith isn't merely a passive belief, but an active trust in God's promises. It's the assurance that, with Christ, you're not just a conqueror, but, more than a conqueror, Romans 8 verse 37. Embrace this truth, and you'll find yourself prevailing, not despite your troubles, but through them. With faith as your shield, you are now prepared to live a life of victory in Christ, a life in which defeat has no place and every difficulty serves as a stepping stone to greater success. Victory isn't just an event, it's a lifestyle. It's in every breath you take, every step you make, every decision you decide. 
You're more than a conqueror through him who loves you, Romans 8 verse 37. This victorious life doesn't mean you won't face trials, but it does mean that in every trial, you've already won. Remember, Christ has overcome the world, John 16 verse 33. In the grand tapestry of life, remember, you're an essential thread woven by God's divine hand. Embrace your identity in Christ, step out in faith, and bear the fruit of the Spirit. Trust in His plan, seek divine guidance, and tap into the power of prayer. God has sown seeds of success in your path, it's up to you to water them with faith and action. Remember, the victory is yours in Christ. Keep the faith and continue to shine. Thanks for listening.